Whoop. Ding! Hello and welcome Yay. to IPL Cast Fifty Nine. Uh, coming to you from God, I don't I don't know. Fairly good weather. Actually. <laughs> I think this is the first positive thing I've said about the weather in several IPL casts. Yep. Um, yeah. That, several. So, well, <laughs> since, since we started, <laughs> since we started doing the weather gag, really. Mm. Uh, but anyway, coming um, to you live from Sydney and the UK. Um, yes. What is it? Western London, I would say. No, just outside. Southeast. <laughs> Southeast. Fine. Um, <laughs> Are you seriously southeast? Last time I checked. Last time I checked, you were southwest. Southwest, southeast, I don't know. It's one of the two. <laughs> They're very different. Yeah, yeah I one know. is east and one is west. Never anyway. eat shredded wheat. So yeah, southeast. Southeast. Oh, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll sort this out after the episode. But anyway. Um, I'm Gino. Megan's on the other line in the city office, and Katie's joining us from the UK. Hi. And who, oh boy, do we have a lot of Pokemon news to go through? Indeedy. I mean, and some what, of it what I haven't actual... heard of. More Generation Seven news. More Pokemon. More gaming details, and yet another non-binary character of the fandom to obsess over. The following Pokemon have been officially revealed. Silverly, type Null's evolution. It seems to be based off Arceus with its ability to change its primary type based on what specific item it is holding. An ability called the RKS system, which is cute. It is said it will only evolve when it gains a partner it can trust. Whether or not this is fully supported in the game is yet to be seen, but I can already see the hints of a plot line here. Hakamo O. -Oh. The evolution of the previously revealed Jangma. It is essentially taller, lankier, and with more scales. It can have either bulletproof or soundproof as an ability, and is said to dance before battle to show off its strength, clanging its scales to make them ring and emitting a war cry. Komo, -o, the first evo the final evolution of Jangmo. It looks like a giant scaled lanky samurai. It has the same ability options as Hakamo. -o, and can learn the new move Clanging Scales, which lowers its own defense after attacking, much like Brave Bird. Steeny, a grass-type evolution of Bonsuit. With a fruity white dress, it also has two giant leaves on its head that is apparently harder than Bonsuit's head, making it no longer afraid of being stabbed, so it is more social. Serena. The final evolution of Bonsuit, it looks like a fruit woman with long stocking legs and flowing leaf-like hair. It can have the new ability Queenly Majesty, which is exclusive to Serena and prevents the opponent from using a priority move, which is actually pretty powerful. It can also learn a new move called Trop Kick, which lowers the opponent's defense after dealing damage. It apparently has a very regal personality. Ribombi. The Bug Fairy Evolution of Cutiefly. It can have the ability Honey Gather or Shield Dust. They collect pollen into balls called pollen puffs, which are edible and can cause paralysis or dizziness. I don't know why you'd want them to be edible then. <laughs> Alolan Grimer and Muck have also been revealed. Alolan Grimer is Poison Dark type and has a yellow ring around its lower jaw, looking much like when car coolant gunks up. Alolan Muck is fabulous with its new rainbow flow, which strongly resembles an oil slick in water. Apparently, it can store its own toxicity inside of its own body, which results in a lack of foul odor, so it doesn't stink anymore. A new kahuna has been revealed named Olivia. Belonging to the second island the player visits, Akala Island, she focuses on rock-type Pokemon with Nose Pass and Midnight Lycan Rock. She is apparently so skilled she became a kahuna at a young age. Also revealed is Ilima, a graduate of the trainer's school who is the captain of the Verdant Cavern Trial. He is apparently considered a hero by former students. Cool. I like wow. how um, yeah, uh, the Tumblr's basically latched onto Ilima as the second coming of, um, of Blanche. <laughs> Blanche which is really good. Yeah, um, I'm just going to point mm. out exactly how adorable Ribombi is. 
So let me just um, share the screen here and just let everybody remember yeah. how cute Rabombi actually is. And so it's tiny, actually, too. I know. It's, it is. it's so tiny as well. So adorable. Not like Alolan Ooh. Muck, though. <laughs> yeah, I actually quite like um, the new Muck design. The grammar one, kind of weird, I... but the Muck looks pretty good. I prefer the original mug than the Alola mug, honestly, though, because the Alola mug looks scary as hell. Seriously. That doesn't necessarily mean bad. I know, but still, it's got freaking rock teeth or something like that. Okay, since um, since it's not going to get discussed anywhere else, let me try and pull up the actual um, the actual reveal of Alola in Persian. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> I forgot to mention that one. It yeah, hasn't been uh, officially revealed. Yes, but it has. It was it's on an official publication. Yeah. Is it now? Not in the sense that we have I, information on it. It was pretty much no. accidentally put onto... Um, it's on a cover of, I think, the Pokédex book. And that cover mm. was revealed to us, so we do actually know what it looks like now. Mm. Um, yeah, it's on, the, um, it's on the official Pokédex for the new games. Yeah. I, I'm just going to say this right now. It looks absolutely weird to me. <laughs> it's weird. not just you. Like, I'm, I'm just... There have been a lot of memes online about the new Persian design. This is a face I'm only like, a meme I, of could I, love. Bleh. I prefer the original Persian. <laughs> Honestly. Oh, well, look, the original I mean... Persian was nice and regal and not fat. I do like the Alola Meow, but I like the original Persian, which is old. Well, if you get Alola Meow, you're stuck with this. Unfortunately, I'll have to give it an Everstone forever then. Yeah. <laughs> it took me about three days to accept that this was the new design because I, I kept thinking, this must be a joke. This must be someone having a laugh. It can't be real. But unfortunately, it is. Uh... Unfortunately, it is. Um, while we're here and we're talking about um, new Pokemon, let me just see if it's here. Let's talk about the um, let's talk about the demo, since we all have it. Oh, the demo! Oh yeah, yes. yeah. I haven't got like much play through for it, but it is quite interesting. Okay, we I are at the um... wee bit less involved than the last demo. Because that had several episodes where each episode that you do something new, but this one it's got like the start episode, and then after that it sort of has yeah. this. Um, it has time unlocks. It, yeah. it has time unlocks, but it's all done in the same area. It's the same area as the original story, but like nothing new really happens. You just got to find people and talk to them, and then they'll say come back in five days, and five days later that you come back and there might be a cutscene, that sort of thing. It, it um, it's. I, I found it kept my attention a lot less. Than the last demo. Yeah. Yeah, I don't it, think it was. Um, I, like. I don't like think it, does, it, was it does what it needs to do. It introduces you to the game. It gives you an opportunity to catch Pokemon for as long as you want. It 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 shows you how the trials work. Um, there are a lot of areas where you can battle Pokemon. In the catching area, you can catch Pokemon and then battle with those Pokemon. So you can trial. I think five it, different I think, types of Pokemon. Yeah. I including think considering that, um, mm -hmm. I think considering that compared to the Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire demo, um, they did introduce a lot more concepts in here because it's a new generation. Um, yeah. They weren't going to. They weren't going to. Well, they might. We we don't know that yet. But um, they weren't going to oversaturate this thing with content, seeing as they're already hyping us up for the main game. They're they're saving a mm -hmm. lot of it up for the main game. Um, one of the things that I like, one of the things that I noticed is um, just how much better the thing runs on a, th a new 3DS compared to an old 3DS. Yeah, absolutely. I'm using like, the old 3DS, and it noticeably chugs. It really does. I, I have, I have, I have minor frame rate issues using it on the new 3DS, but other than that, like the performance is just, it's, it's straight up there, just solid. It, it's, the it's really way good. Through. Yeah. Yeah, but then I tried it on my 3DS XL, and I'm like, oh, it's chugging. 
This it still plays well enough that you don't have to go buy a new 3DS if you don't already have one to play they this did, game. But during, during the um, battle animations, especially if it's really big and fancy, there was noticeable frame rate drop, like quite severe. Um, I think during the cutscenes where there are a lot of elements on the screen, it does chug there a bit. Not so much that I'm going to race out and buy a new one, but it is there. Like, it is a thing. It's it's now at the point, I think, that they have, because they've optimized the engine for the newer generation hardware while still keeping the old one playable. Um, the next one that comes through, I think, is going to start transitioning towards new 3DS territory. Um, if, 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 if they've shown us anything, it's just that they're going to try and push this engine hard. Mm -hmm. Um I can imagine that most of the Z move stuff we've seen, or all of the Z move stuff we've seen, was played on U3DS hardware. Yeah. Oh, so. yeah. When I did it, it did chug a bit on the Z. Yeah. No, it'll. Yeah. It, it, it chugs something fierce. This is a clever on, way. On this is a clever way to encourage people to adopt the new 3DS without, like, without chopping up your user base. A lot of the concerns. <clears throat> Same when um, PlayStation did this with the updated PlayStation 4. I think it was PlayStation. Um, but a lot of the concerns was that if you segregate the user base like this, um, there'll be less people on the new system and thus less people getting the games and thus less people making games for the new system, thus the new system being an absolute failure. But oh, no, this is actually... This is kind of a clever way to do it because while the game is still playable on the old 3DS... Um, like perfectly playable. It, there is a noticeable drop in speed, in frame rate, and all these things that aren't necessarily important to play the game, but can shit somebody enough that they'll go and buy the new one. Mm -hmm. and it kind of just motivates people, essentially, without actually mm -hmm. separating your user base. Yeah, basically, like if you want the best play experience for Sun and Moon, get a yeah. new 3DS. Get a new mm, 3DS yeah. XL, in fact, since they're the price of the original 3DS after the price cut. But you can still play it even if you don't. Yeah, you can still, like, it's totally compatible. It's like, um, the way I would describe it is like playing Pokemon Gold and Silver on an original Game Boy versus playing it on a Game Boy Color. Yeah. That is that is the feel. Like, you, you will have, there's, there's performance drawbacks in playing it on the old hardware, but you can still play it on the old hardware. Nothing's stopping you. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, I, I'm pretty much just going to, I think, um, get the download and play it on the new 3DS just to see how it compares with the old 3DS when Megan starts playing the um, the physical copy. Because mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. like the first time, the first time we ever realized there was a major difference was when we got Super Smash Brothers. Mm. Remember? Because Super Smash Brothers took forever to start up on a on a regular 3DS it does. system. Oh, and it yeah. was Yeah. But on a new 3DS it was instantaneous. Yeah. Hmm. You also notice that when you open up stuff like the eShop. Hmm. It just loads yeah. so much quicker. It downloads so much quicker as well. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just taking advantage of so much. Mm. This is the product they should have released first, except they didn't have access to all of that all of that technology at the start. Hmm. Yeah, basically. But anyway, let's. Uh, let's see it. Hmm? Let's see it. The new 3DS is essentially the DS Lite. Like it was the same system, played the same games, but it was a more advanced version. Yep. It, it was the DSi more than it was the DS Lite, I think. Oh DSi, no, actually sorry. no. Yeah, you yeah. Never no, actually I... had those. They're stuck with the original DS. So. <laughs> Well, we didn't really, there wasn't really any reason because most of the DS style, like most of the DS eShop software wasn't that big on our agenda of things to get. There wasn't any they major... They didn't push market. games quite as hard as they're doing with the 3DS. Yeah. In terms but of the like, difference um, between the two consoles. With the new 3DS, you can, I think you can only play SNES, um, SNES um, virtual console games on the new 3DS. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Um, so but it's like SNES. That, you don't need hardware for SNES. 
you can play you can play GBA games on any of the two consoles. You can play NES games on any of the two consoles. But I think for SNES specifically, um, mm. it's new 3DS exclusive. Bah. Mm. Right. That was Should before we your time. Um, Should we get back on track? Or? Yeah, let's talk about a little on Doug Trio. Oh, no, not that That was hilarious. <laughs> How does it dig? That is my question. question because obviously, was... obviously. No, 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 but think about it. Think about it. It has these gorgeous flowing locks, not a shred yeah. of dirt in them, not a single messed strand. How does it dig? How does it burrow its way through the ground and then pop up with that quality hair. It, it's just like one of those WTF moments, isn't it? That is not what you look like if you've just spent, what, maybe an hour digging around under the ground head first. <laughs> it's probably head first, or at least roughly head first. I have to say, though, I have to say that the one in the rear is like a blonde version of me. It, it's got really <laughs> long hair. It, it actually goes down to the ground, like from there. It's really long. Yeah, 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 and you yeah, see yeah. the animation no, see, and the hair just mm, flows. Mm. Yeah. It's hilarious. It's I, don't really under, I just don't understand how it functions as a Pokemon anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I, I didn't quite know how it functioned as a Pokemon before then. Not in terms of what its feet look like. I just mean in terms of how it does its it main function. Doug Trio, Doug Trio digs. How does this dig? Doug Trio, I remember, I, I think the original Doug Trio looked angry. Yeah, he shaved did. it, obviously. Or was the original art just Doug, the three Doug Trios looking normal? Because I swear no, one of them looked angry. Three Doug Trios. Sorry, three, three, oh man, that's like, that's like nine. Nine Doug Trios. <laughs> yeah, fine. Um, but yeah, it's it's. Um, oh no, they still look. Uh, they 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 didn't they didn't look angry. They they're just looking normal. I still. I'm like. So what is the difference I think between it was the this? The original artwork that looked angry. Uh, I think the, the Suzuki Mori art made it look normal. Uh, they they were they had neutral expressions. <coughs> One of them I, was angry. I think. I, I I still, all these years, twenty years later, and I still cannot. Um, I, I still can't reconcile the fact. That this is just three digwits coming out of the same hole mm. and sharing the same pokeball, and at least yeah. Magneton has an excuse. Like they've all sort of fused together via Magneton. Yeah, Magneton looks far enough apart. Diglett, it just they've decided to be best buddies. Yeah, they've de they decided to house share. Yeah, <laughs> they're flatmates. They certainly look like that in their Alolan form. I, I, mm, okay. No, Anybody no, else? Um, their bros. Mm. Any other thoughts on, like, Poke Finder? It's like the second coming of, um, it's like the second coming of Pokemon Snap. I think because, um, especially with the Alolan Dog Trio section, they start adding a zoom function to the thing. It's interesting that they've included it, considering how many people really, really want a new Pokemon Snap. So I can kind of see this as, in a way, them appeasing that fan base while also showing off the new power of the new game, <clears throat> what, what it's capable of, that sort of thing. Because you'll notice it's like it, it's been pure three D um, since last generation, I think. But you'll notice the perspective has really changed. Like it's not strictly top down anymore. It, it, it's mm. they're using a lot lower angle more, like more often like through the overworld you'll notice you don't have that tiny little chibi person anymore it's a proper full body person yeah, it's full body they're um yeah, but they I are suspect this feature is specifically showing that sort of thing off that's true um i mean they've had the tech in for a while but now they've just really pushed hard on the engine for this one mm. um the other thing I was thinking about with regards to the the with regards to the Poke Finder is um, it's it's what we want. It, it, like I remember when people were clamoring for Pokemon Snap to be re-released on the Wii U with Wii U gamepad controls, and they didn't. <laughs> and they didn't. 
They just released Pokemon Snap. Deal with it. Um, <laughs> but now they're releasing this. They've got the Pokefinder function. And the very first time I tried it, it took me about a second to realize I was controlling the viewfinder using the um, using the rotational control. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that does work. You don't have to use it. I use the C stick, but it does work. It it's not the same. Wait, as Pokemon Snap. Did you just did you just call the the, the analog stick the C stick? Yes, I did. <laughs> okay. You are truly a child of the Nintendo sixty four era. Damn right. <laughs> That thing was just, a C stick. Just okay. So this is the C stick. This is the analog stick. <laughs> but the old 3DS doesn't have a C stick. I know. You're like, when did you get a Circle Pad Pro? Shut up. I work. I work from the 64 era. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. You can also control it using the C stick, but it's not the same as Pokemon Snap. It's just not yeah. the same depth, the same quality. Like it, it's not the same feel. So it's definitely not a replacement. But the fact that they've pulled this off suggests that if people keep clamoring, clearly they have both the technology uh, to make an updated version of Pokemon Snap. Um, I love the little random events. Um, we don't have all of them yet, but um, a lot of players have already been saying that these yeah. happen on a fairly random basis, except for one of them. On Sundays, you have um, how um, you can find instead of finding how inside um, the Pokemon Center, you find him. Um, um, you find him at a place where they're serving malasadas. Mm. All right, right. I'm not even kidding. I want malasadas. I don't know what they are, what? but I want what one. What is a malasada? It's apparently, um, okay. Hold on. Let me try and let me try and bring up. They look like donuts, but I'm probably butchering that. They look like jam donuts, really. Okay. Jam donuts. Yeah, they, they they look like, like jam donuts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give me a second. Oh yeah, those. Donuts, yeah, I know what you're talking about. These are apparently malasadas. Hmm. Huh. They must be called different from in other countries then. Well, yeah, um, I call them jam donuts. Um, <laughs> it's apparently egg-sized. Ah, so they're smaller. Yeah, mm. I, I, I want malasadas. If you live in the Sydney area and you know where I can get malasadas, I would like to try some, please. <laughs> I'm gonna Google malasadas Sydney. Uh, it's hmm. Oh, I, is there anything here? Can I? Can I? Mm, is there anywhere in Sydney that sells malasadas? <laughs> Nothing. All right. Let's let's take this out later. Um. <laughs> It's apparently a thing that's really popular in Hawaii. It's it's mm. yeah, but yeah. Um, how we'll have balasadas on Sunday. Mm-hmm. You can occasionally run into the girl who gives you the the, the zoom function and the viewfinder, so you can run into a Lola and Doug trio. Um, you can run into Lily. Mm. She's on the western side of Haoli City. Yeah. Um. And then you can run into. If you guys remember Dexio and Cinna from Gen Six, no, you don't remember Dexio and Cinna from Gen Six. Dexio, no, I don't know. Are those, are those the um the guys dressed in white that seemed like they were going to do something important and they never did? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I remember yeah. them. Yeah. They're in um. They're <laughs> in. Appearing, and it's like, oh, these guys must be important to the story. It's going to appear later, and I never did. Yeah, they're actually important in. Um, they're actually important in Sun and Moon. Hmm. Hmm. Are they dressed um, up as superheroes again? No, they're dressed up as hipsters. <laughs> of course, they would be dressed up as superheroes. No, 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 no. They're not dressed up as superheroes. They're dressed up really? as hipsters. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me a they're second. They're not dressed as superheroes, really. <laughs> It's like your disbelief. See? Oh <clears throat> my god. 
So they actually do something this time? Yeah. Something mm. to do with Zygarde. Because, you know, it's their generation. Mm. Well, shit. Also, do you guys... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, do you guys recognize that building behind them? Isn't that the hotel from the first screenshot? Yes, it is. Oh, my I God. Think, I think that's actually the Ether Foundation HQ. Hmm. Well, shit. <laughs> so they can't afford their own HQ? They live out of a hotel? Oh my God. No, they bought the hotel. It's their HQ. They're that rich. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I like how you assume it's the hotel they live in as opposed to they bought the building. I get the impression that they mm -hmm. would sooner live in a hotel than buy one. Yeah. <laughs> in my head canon, they're only <laughs> renting. <laughs> in my head canon, which is the only canon. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so um, uh, they they have they they do something in relation to Zygarde. Um, you you mm. I don't know if you notice in that screenshot, Cinna is wearing a Z ring. She is actually that now that I've seen it. I get the yeah. impression so it's not as exclusive as the Mega Ring was. It's not. Mm. It's probably not. Um, so yeah, this will be um, this will be interesting. Um, yeah, it, it's it's nice it's nice seeing good callbacks. Also, the fact that I'm gonna have to deal with Samuel. No, not Samuel Oak. What's his name? Is it Samuel Oak? No, it's um something something Oak. It's similar. That was the joke. Samson Oak. Samson, that's it. <laughs> you know, I just found a screenshot of Samson Oak that is just. I, I, I gotta share this. He was doing something. There was a screenshot where he has something on his head. Nope, it's this screenshot. Oh, oh my god! god. Oh god. <laughs> Look, he's an Eevee! No, oh he's god. not! That looks awful! That's creepy! He's no Eevee of mine! <laughs> I didn't say he was yours. Have to admit, <laughs> he does a good impression. Yes. That was uh, okay. All right, fair, fair, but still, what the hell? Um, <laughs> I'm just, I'm like, I love how they can explain it as I'm his cousin. I'm darker now because I've been here for a while. I would have thought he was just born there and is actually at least half a Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, you would think so. It's kind of like, oh, why, why are you here? It's a long story. Oh I'm not God. really his cousin. I'm his half brother. No. <laughs> Back from Just the days no. when we were plowing your mother. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got it from somewhere. What can we say? <laughs> what the fuck, Gino? Okay. Anyway, what let's let's keep that? talking about the. Uh, uh, yeah. You'll have to watch something. Um, it was anyway. a Pokemon bridge joke, Katie. <laughs> did, I, did I break her? I, I never I watched her. the abridged version of Pokemon. <laughs> I think I broke her. <clears throat> okay, that's we're one host down, guys. Let's, uh, let's anyway, continue talking about this. Come on, go. Update, 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 update. Let's just Somebody's just rushing through this thing. All right, fine. Fine. Quick, before he <laughs> mentions it again. <laughs> I have to go soon anyway, <laughs> Go! New update for Pokemon Go reveal that Pokemon eggs will now have a different pattern based off of how many kilometers are needed to hatch them. Pokemon type icons have also been added to the, the info screen of each Pokemon. And finally, a low battery indicator has been added. That low battery indicator is for Pokemon Go Plus. So it'll actually tell oh. you if the Pokemon Go Plus is running low on battery. If your I phone can't. is running low on battery, your phone will tell you. I don't even have enough memory for that freaking update at the moment. <laughs> what? <laughs> that storage, yeah. Man, you need more to clean room. Yeah, I've got too I much mean, I'm not on in it. a position to talk to you about making more room since we both have 128 gig phones, but it's just make more room. 
To be fair, I use like yeah. maybe five cake. Yeah, I have, I haven't run out of space oh, yeah, in, in the two years no. that I've owned that phone. I haven't run out of space, and in the um, I, have, I, I guess it's because I'm new to iPhone that I haven't accumulated that much crap. In in, in the um in the mm -hmm. month or so that I've had this phone, um, I've barely even look. Hold on, wait, yeah, the month or so that I've had this phone, I've barely filled it up. You know well, what? Anyway, I'm with my way, camel. <laughs> okay. Laughing too hard. Um, yeah, probably. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's talk about. Um, well, I mean, you've got you got the Pokemon egg differences now. Great. Um, we've got type icons. Also good. Well, we'll we'll just find out how that goes. I'm still waiting for my major features update, Niantic. I want trading before the end of the year, at least. I want Please. battling. I know. All right. Let's move on to Pokemon Generations. Pokemon Generations Episode 8 teaches you why you should hold on to Mystic Orbs. The 8th episode of Pokemon Generations is now available, and man, is Primal Kyogre terrifying. If you haven't seen it yet, you should go watch it. Let's just say, after having seen it, Archie isn't as smart as he claims to be. Yeah, I know. Uh, it, it's, uh, uh, it, what, really hurts to, what really hurts about this is just seeing how much of an idiot he continues to be for the entirety of the episode. I'm like it doesn't fucking click. <laughs> I know. I'm like, are you just, are you Holy mad? Shit. Primal uh, Kyogre actually, is the boss. He, he's got psycho, like, he's got psycho snap. Yeah, he has those, like, no. I've, just, I've just unhinged all of the way eyes for the yeah. entire episode. Just, it d doesn't stop. Pretty much. He looks like a creepy Pokemon psycho of some sort. That's okay. Most, most <laughs> villains do. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, um, Maxi, like, they actually had a much better depiction of Maxi than they did of this guy. Archie just, Archie just comes off bad. <clears throat> oh, my God. Like, Maxi comes off as collected and controlled. To be Archie fair, just comes that's off as completely Maxi's unhinged. personality. Whereas I think yeah. Archie's personality is that he's a bit unhinged. That's true. So they've done well mm. there. Can't complain. It's just that orb thing that's been really shitting everybody. <laughs> All right, you, let's. Uh, I'm not going to spoil. You got to watch it, but it's yeah, really yeah. obvious what people are talking about. And, but after that, like when um when it comes to the actual Primal Kyogre, it's really impressive how they depict just how powerful this thing is. It, like you it can is really just, see um, the difference. You don't see regular Kyogre in this, but you can still see the difference between what regular Kyogre would be capable of and what Primal Kyogre is capable of, and it is hmm. genuinely terrifying. It's really well hmm. done. All right, let's uh, let, let's let's get back to this next one. Um, let's move on to the other one. Amazon unwittingly reveals new Pokemon. You skipped one. Uh, we'll get back to that because that's the bigger okay. one. Amazon unwittingly reveals new Pokemon via pro promotional box art. Amazon has accidentally leaked a new Pokemon via the box art for the new TCG cards. It looks like its design is based off a sea urchin and is feminine. Its pose suggests it is shy. It's very. I, I love that. Like mm -hmm. I love that it came out. And the, the fandom latched onto it. New information! We've got new Pokemon! We will store this image forever. And then it gets taken down off Amazon. You can't... Yeah, it's like the well, yeah, gone. once they realize what I did. Mm -hmm. Herpaderp. Um, yeah, so there's a new, like, underwater, like, ish water type Pokemon coming soon. I'm going to guess it might be water poison. Um, it looks like it. Like, it looks yeah. like a sea urchin, which yeah. is water poison. So I imagine yeah. that's what it's going to be like. Well, we'll find out soon enough. I mean, um, like, I'm being good. Um, a lot of people have managed to data mine the demos already. So there's a, a, there's a lot of information in there. Um, but, yeah, I've been, I've been fairly... I've been keeping fairly on the lowdown and not spoiling it for myself. Yeah, Megan. I haven't. I've seen Megan's, all of it. I hungrily looked over it with my hungry eyes. Yes, you did. So uh, I, of, <laughs> I know what its evolution looks like. Yeah. It's cool. Um, speaking of um, speaking of things, I hungrily look over with my eyes. Nintendo has revealed the next console, and it's not <coughs> called the NX. Oh yes, the Nintendo Switch. At last, Nintendo has officially revealed the next-gen console due for release in March next year. Called the Nintendo Switch, the console focuses on portability, with the, train with the trailer showing players being able to undock the console and take it with them out of the house to be played like a standard portable console. The controllers for the console 
uh, much like the Wii U gamepad, but a detachable and resemble a Wiimote. Current concerns for this uh, setup is resolution, i.e. can a portable focus device support a TV worthy image quality and battery life, i.e. if this thing is powerful enough to support a TV worthy image quality, just how long will it survive undocked? Um, I'm very excited though. You, you see, it, it, it's, it, it looks like the main thing is that it's a very thin tablet like screen, but sort of like designed to look like a TV. So it doesn't have, um, it's it seems like it's mostly screen, not it just feels like, it border. It feels like it's got and then um, it feels like it it got tablet specs. Yeah, which kind it of it looks. It, that's what it, that's what it looks like. And then you've got these two controllers. They look like the sides of a Wii of the Wii U gamepad, except they can slide like sleeker, and they can slide on and off the sides. So you can either play the thing like the gamepad with them attached, mm -hmm. or you can play you can dock the thing. You can take them off, and then you can play them like two Wiimotes. Um, you can also apparently use them for multiplayer where w one uses one of them and the other person uses the other one, or maybe they have other ones. Uh, apparently, um, they have the ability to connect with each other in the sense that you can line them up and then have your own little competitions. That's part of the trailer. They had like, um, a, a Splatoon stadium wide competition thing where they yeah, all dock into these ports and then started yeah. playing. <laughs> yeah, apparently from that, yeah, those, that's all new, that Splatoon stuff. So that probably... Yeah, they're thinking there's going to be a Splatoon, Splatoon 2. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so one of, like, one of the things I'm going to note about this is that it, um, it runs on an NVIDIA Tegra processor. Mm. Um, and the NVIDIA Tegra processor is actually capable of running a a like I believe it's a it's a 4K by 2K screen. So it like it runs a 4K um, it runs a 4K resolution screen mm. at 60 frames. <clears throat> my concern isn't the resolution. Like I've seen it being brought up by some people, but my concern is mostly the battery life. Because okay. we all know how powerful our phones are, and these are top-notch devices, and we all know how long those batteries last. Tegras and then with are... the 3DS, which is a bit better, but it still runs out if you play it most of the day. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm going to guess that it's not going to be much better than the 3DS. That's that's the mm. prediction because you can only go so far to keep the costs down with a heavy um with a heavy focus on uh, like lithium ion batteries for mm. devices. We'll note we'll note that the processor is like the graphics processor is actually designed for like portable devices, stuff like the Nvidia Shield, I would imagine. Mm. So it they've clearly chosen a partner. Um, they've clearly chosen a partner who who knows what they're doing in terms of creating um, portable stuff. And this thing is running on Maxwell architecture. Potentially, this could be more powerful than the graphics card I have on my desktop. But we'll have to see. Mm. <laughs> um, so like, no, like from a... no hmm? Nintendo, they have a history of choosing components of a console that isn't necessarily top spec but it's like it, it's sufficient enough that it's an advancement but it's not so amazingly powerful that it tends not to over spec at spec um like the ps4 or the xbox um, they are what they do do is it's got durability it's got um most of the time it's got good playability design. Um, it's got good game support that work well with the features that it does have. So I'm not worried about quality. Like that's really not my concern. My concern is mostly just the battery life. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. thinking about this from a technical perspective because this yeah. is the this is the key. If your graphics processor is powerful enough to handle this sort of thing, then you're you're more or less set. I think this thing is going to have the performance, the longevity of a tablet. Mm. Um, we're talking, um, we're talking higher end iPads more yeah. more than anything. Mm. Um, even the iPad Pro, I would say, um, more than the like the standard lower end Android tablets. I would say mm. this is a, a heavy thing. Um, the other thing I am going to note here is that it's running a sorry, it's running a custom Tegra processor. Um, might mm. be newer architecture. And I, from everything I've read about the newer architecture, it's designed to be more power efficient. It's designed to like you know, it, it's designed to be more cost efficient than the um, than than the current state of uh, like the previous generation of processors. Mm. So 
this is one of those few instances that um, this is those one of few, one of those few instances where Nintendo is pushing forward in terms of technology. And that's worrying because the last time they did that, we ended up with the Virtual Boy. <coughs> to be fair, I think I don't think this is going to be another Virtual Boy, but. If you think about it, while the components themselves might be new, they tend not to use all new technology itself. They tend to stick to stuff that's already current, maybe improve upon its functionality a little bit so it is more cost effective and more efficient, that sort of thing. But they always tend to use old technology with new ideas. Okay. Uh, uh, having said that, though, this like Nvidia's actually come out and said, no, this is not old generation. This isn't the um, this isn't the old generation Tegra stuff. Mm -hmm. This is some fairly new hardware, like not bleeding edge, but close enough to the edge that it's actually surprising that Nintendo's partnered up with Nvidia for this one. Um, well, that's interesting. Yeah, this is this is the this is the point that I was um, trying to get at is that the like the hardware configuration they've chosen for this is fairly far forward. It's not it's not super duper optimized for higher end bleeding and out of your eyeballs console gaming, but it is it's it tries to craft a very careful balance between um, power usage and graphics output. Um, mm. What I think is going to happen, I think that screen is less than 1080p. It's less than TV resolution for a reason. Um, and that is I less wouldn't expect a screen of that size to be high resolution. It yeah. doesn't need mm -hmm. to be. I expect it to be slightly higher resolution than the, um, than the Wii U gamepad screen, uh, which means it's still, like, it's still playable. I expect mm -hmm. it to be on a, an aspect ratio that actually matches the television, which is 16 by 9. Um, but that I don't expect it... I don't expect it to be at a 1080 thing. If it is at a 1080 um, uh, resolution, I'm going to be very surprised because that that basically means that the um, the processor can oh like it's not it's a power 1080 efficient. It is. I've seen devices that will do this and are extremely power efficient. You think? Um, but the what I'm trying to say about this is that they like they'll have this. And if they reduce the resolution, then yeah, it's even going to be even more power efficient than it is. But there, there's a certain limit to where they're going to go with it because they're obviously going to want to up the resolution from the Wii U gamepad, um, and the Wii U gamepad already has a fairly decent resolution. It's just shy of actually the full 720 resolution. Um, what do you think of the concept? The fact that each um, each controller. Um, functions as both a gamepad and a like a Wii U. Uh, I can a, a Wii understand. Remote. I can understand the decision because obviously yeah. the focus is to make this home console just as portable as a 3DS. Like that's yeah. where Nintendo excels. They they do extremely well with portable consoles. There's just nothing else that compares to it. Like the PSP just did that had nothing on the 3DS or the or the DS or whenever the hell it. I, I, I like the fact mm -hmm. that the um, I like the fact that it immediately comes with two controllers off the bat, so you can play yeah. two-player games. No, well, like off. I said, I can understand the decision of making them detachable. Um, obviously, they've gone, they've made the design so it looks similar to the gamepad. It would be pretty awkward to hold it if it didn't have two controllers off the bat, because you can't just have one controller attached and then your other hand is touching the screen or like right up against the edge. It, it's just no, no. not. I think I think the I think I think the design on it is pretty ingenious. The fact that yeah. you can separate, um, you can put them to the like you can put them to an actual controller handle and play yeah. it like a large controller, but also but take them I mean. apart, put them next, and then yeah, just that's what the I mean. Like, I can understand the decision that they've made this because clearly it, it, it's a waste to have the controllers attached if it's docked. It's it's an absolute waste. So by making them detachable, they both have an efficient docked console design and an undocked console design. This is actually great. This basically means that I, you can kick me out if I'm. Um, you can kick me out of the the living room if I'm. If I'm like. If you need to use television <laughs> Lo logically, just... logically, you could do that with the Wii U. Like the range isn't great, but you can still take it to your office. It okay, will work yeah. but if you were playing a Wii game with the Wii U, could you do that? No, I. Don't the know. Wii doesn't support that. Yeah. And I um, wouldn't expect. I it's fair enough, you know. I don't think this that, thing is going really to have... That's not really something I see as a problem. 
Yeah, I, I don't think this thing is gonna have the like I I, I am like I am totally excited about this. Um, I'm hoping um, I'm hoping like the the hype isn't so crazy that we cannot find a unit at launch. I'm just gonna will. say this right now. There's already been a couple of people already reviewing it, even though it's not freaking out yet. Uh, yeah, no, that would make happen. sense. They would have prototype copies. Um, the, I, the console... I strongly doubt that this is going to be sold out at launch. And even if it is, mm. I would still rather wait a bit just for them to restock and calm down, and maybe there might be a price adjustment, that sort of thing. Like, it usually will, doesn't will... happen, but it, it, it's not like this is an amiibo. There is yeah, going will... to be plenty of them. <laughs> they will. Well, we'll see. And a um... console is not the sort of thing that you reduce the quantity of. The, the artificial okay. rarity. It, it's the con yeah, consoles yeah, yeah, are not what you do that because you want artificial rare. Yeah, no, but with the consoles, it's, you it's, want no, 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 everyone no, no. It's, to it's, have it's one the... immediately to buy the games mm -hmm. and all that. You just don't restrict that sort of thing. So I'm, I'm genuinely not, not concerned. Uh, I'm not even talking about the artificial rarity thing. I'm talking about the fact that when the Wii U launched, the big retailers, the actual side retailers, actually didn't have stock for a good month. Mm. It's just a month. Yeah, 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 I know. Um, I mean, like, they're going to try... Uh, what I imagine they're going to do is they're going to try and organize um, pre-order deals across the four major branches. So you have Kmart... Sorry, yeah. you have Big W Target. Um, in, in Australia, anyway. You have Big W Target, you have um, EB Games, and then you have JB Hi-Fi. Mm. Um, and well, all four and of them are going to been up and coming. I imagine they'll have something too. That's true, but they're not going to undercut anyone. No. They can't okay. afford to undercut anyone. So, uh, unfortunately, game traders, we're not going to buy it from you. Um, so, I imagine that either Big W or Big W Kmart or JB Hi-Fi are going to try and undercut the thing from EB Games. Mm. Um, it's not so much that they reduce the price, but that they tack games onto it games and controllers and, and other bits and pieces. So we'll have we'll to see, see what, what they're I actually, offering. I, I, don't we'll gonna be, I don't think I don't think it's gonna be controllers. I think it's gonna be mm. games. I, I wanna see what... not, not in this case. Like the Wii the Wii and the Wii U, yeah, it, it came in handy to have extra controllers. In this case, I think it's less controllers and more games or any extra hardware that would come with it. Because I imagine if it functions with the remotes, much like Wiimotes, if they're undocked, you'd probably have to have something similar to that little sensor bar. Unless, of course, the sensor bar is also attached to the... I don't, I don't attached. think it's going to be using sensor bar type probably controls not. anymore. I think they're moving away from the motion controller side of things and just mm. focusing on it as a wireless controller. You think so? I think, like, I don't, I don't think I've seen any game they've demoed demonstrating it as a motion controller in any degree. I think That's it's still true. got I think I've still got I think it's still got motion uh, capabilities on it, but I don't the, the cameras are going to be extra expense. The cameras are going to be extra power usage. They're mm -hmm. not going to be worth bringing in terms of like um carrying around the the actual console housing like the big screen. Mm. Um that would, I guess uh, that's true because if you had a game that was that, that relied on um, the like a a sensor bar sort of motion, you yeah. can't really play that when it's undocked. So, it's so I can understand that. Yeah. What I what I predict this thing is going to have is absolutely no sensor bar capabilities, but it's it will still have gyroscopic um 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 uh like it'll yeah. still detect where the the controller is in yeah. physical space. Yeah. Um, which would make sense if you've seen the like the games like Mario. Um, um, if you've seen the the Mario Kart game, they're actually tilting the controller. I suppose that's one way of actually driving it. Otherwise, they're going to be using it like you know regular controllers. To be fair, people do that anyway. <laughs> yeah, um, but it, I, I've not seen anything that suggests these are motion controllers to any degree. There are no, there's no place for the straps. Um, everybody's mm. motion looks. Like they're You're still talking about the controller. switch. Hmm? Are you still talking about the Switch? Sorry, yeah, I we're very to... much talking about it's the, the last one. Yeah, yeah, it's the last one. <laughs> um, but yeah, unfortunately, it... I'm about to go to. <laughs> okay, well, if you gotta go, you gotta go. <laughs> yeah, um, my mum just came back home from work and all that, and I have to go walkie the doggies. Okay. So, are you going? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go, guys. So, see, so sorry about this, but I'm early leaves for now. That's okay. So, 
Catch you guys in the next um, podcast from me. So, bye. Bye. See ya. Bye. So we're going back to the like we're going back to um, talking about the switch and yeah, um, I think lots of potential for this sucker. I I, I remember back when I bought the so much I, like. I remember back when when I got the um, the original Nintendo Wii, and I got a bag for that sucker, and I would put all four controllers and the power switch and everything in there, plus a game in there, and I could take that thing to somebody's house and set mm. it up, and we would go around and play. Mm. This thing is like that, but so much nicer. Oh, a lot simpler, yeah. I, ma- I imagine it's going to have a protective bag. It's Considering it's mostly screen, it's not really something that you just shove inside a backpack and then take with you. Probably will. Right. I've seen a lot of, like, I, I, some of the use cases are really interesting. Like, the guy mm-hmm. who puts it on the plane to play around with it. That was quite, like, I was yeah. like, hmm, hello. Um, like, there's, th- th- there's this is something use. that you could take with you on holiday really conveniently. Like, it, it, it's definitely, I, I can see myself using this a lot more than I use the Wii U, and we, we almost never touch that anymore. This we is, really this don't. Is, this is... This is this is. I want to see what their launch. Um, I want to see what their launch field is. Like, mm. I want to have something in there I'm interested in playing. Um, and then like we'll probably. I don't know if we find a really aggressive deal on this sucker, we might actually. It also comes down to its launch titles. If it's got something that I really want to play, then that's obviously well, going to motivate us to get it around. That's launch, what I mean. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll probably just leave it. Um, the uh, other... I, I know Nintendo hasn't had much of a track record for good launch titles. The, well, well, not in the last generation, yeah. but in in the, the generation before that, the Wii launch, um, the Wii launch thing was fairly insane. Mm, um, the mm. 3DS launch titles were, were also really good. Oh yeah, um, yeah. But like the Wii U's one was like, eh, thanks for giving us a rather crappy zombie game, Ubisoft. Um, yeah. Okay, so yeah, no, what um. I would want to look at what their titles are. Like, I am not motivated by too many of the Nintendo franchises, but if they can give me, um, if they can give me something decent, I can get behind on launch. I can see that will that be strong motivation. Legend for me. of Zelda: Breath of the Wild is going to be a launch title on this because it's got the same release date as the Nintendo Switch, but I'm also expecting that to come out on the Wii U as well. So, like, usually when they do that sort of thing, there are extra features in the newer console version, um, just to encourage people to get that one instead. But I, considering they've been promising that it's going to be on the Wii U as well, or at least you know on the Wii U, uh, I don't think that's going to be much motivation for me. Because <laughs> I was going to ask this... you if you were going to switch, but then I realized that was a pun. So hilarious. When they did this um, with the Twilight Wii. Princess. Twilight Princess. Uh, the biggest difference was um, the inverted the inverted um, map, purely because most people are right-handed, so they switched Link out to be right-handed by just worst inverting. Decision the map they ever made as a lefty. Yeah. That was the worst decision they ever made. I know. Really, he's been right-handed throughout all the motion control ones. It's, it's a bit. Like, I can understand it. It's a bit disappointing. But other than that, um, it didn't really have that much difference. Like there might have been some extra collectibles or something, but there was nothing else different about it. And personally, I preferred the GameCube version. I found um, a friend of mine had the Wii version, and it was actually rather difficult to control. Like, oh, you, you had to swing your sword to slash. Not quite think, the way it worked in Skyward Sword. That was more, like, angled. I think, but yeah, but I think, I think, think that, I think that paradigm is different, though. But it, it basically comes down to if you have... It, it, you're going to be playing it mostly on the gamepad for the duration of this thing. Yeah. Um, whereas, obviously, Switch is going to be Switch. Again, if there is a launch title that is like that I'm going to look at and go, Fudge, I actually want to play that. Well, Paige, um, I'm expecting the launch titles to be revealed around January. I don't think they'd leave it as late as February. They're going to reveal it next month. I'm almost there we go, certain. next month. <laughs> yeah, they're going to reveal it next month. Yeah, we'll see. Or, we'll see. We'll see what they are. Um, We'll see if there's anything that really grabs us. Yeah, uh, at, at the very least, we've always like I've always been um, an early adopter of um, of Nintendo hardware. At the very least, I've always waited a while. I don't yeah, think I, I've ever waited until there's been a significant price drop. But I've always waited to see if there's any other games that come out that I'd really want. Because I don't see the point of buying an entire console just for one or two. 
Um, didn't you wait? Like, did you wait for the price drop on the Nintendo 3DS before you finally got one? No, actually, I got that one pretty quick. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, the I, I'm like, in in terms of in terms of this sort of hardware, I, I want to see what the price is as well because if it's going to be excessive PS4 pricing, then yeah, I am going to sit around and wait for um and and see what deals get offered for this. I thing. remember paying seven hundred dollars for. Actually, no, I think it was $400 for the Wii. And then there was a game that was $100. And I think I got a couple of extra controllers, which upped that a bit. But in the end, I paid $700 all up. I don't think we ever got that far when we got the Wii. Even when we got the Wii, when even when I got the Wii U, um, the only problem was it was a midnight launch and I wanted to get home and I had to deal with all the sinky people in the pre-order queue. Um, mm. But, like... Um, like, part of my dilemma is on launch day, when I get home... I, I want to play it, but I have work the following morning. Mm, that's true. And that's that was the same thing when we got the Wii. Um, we got the Wii, and I essentially ended up with tennis elbow the following morning because <laughs> I played <laughs> Wii tennis literally at the, as soon as I got home. Way um, too energetically. Yeah. Um, I think we had but, the same problem when we when we um, went to the midnight launch of um, Ruby Sapphire. That wasn't that wasn't so bad though because it, like it it's on a portable device and you end up playing with it the yeah. following day. Um, I was just really excited to have the um, the the like the new 3ds as well. Um, but yeah, this is this is obviously different. This is Nintendo trying something completely bonkers. Um, oh look, the, we, we would have said it was completely bonkers when the Wii. Was announced like that was so different to what was available, and it ended up being incredibly popular. So yeah. who knows? Maybe this one is another. This, this doesn't have the same mainstream appeal as the Wii because you know it doesn't attract the same gullible sheep or kind of thing. It's it's clearly a, it, it points to a clear departure from where the Wii generation was in terms of like how this is gonna get played out. But um, mm. yeah. I want to see what their launch titles are. If there's nothing impressive in the launch titles, I might actually hold back for the first time in my life. Actually, hold back. Um, might, might be a good idea. Release. We'll see. Hmm? We'll see. We'll see when we know more. Yeah. Uh, so basically, if you, if you find us here with the launch titles and my mouth is watering, that means yeah, we we are going to aggressively look at the <laughs> what the who has the better launch package. Uh, but anyway, that was our um, that was our last news for the entirety of IPL Cast Fifty Nine. In fact, um, no IPL news at the moment. Um, that's just quietly sitting on hibernate mode as it is. Um, so yeah, that's that's everything we have for IPL Cast Fifty Nine. Um, obviously, next um, next IPL Cast is in November, first um, first Monday of November. Um, and that will be IPL Cast Six Zero. I don't. I don't think we're going to celebrate this as much as we did the Five O. Probably not. I was tempted to make another cake, but I think that's just an excuse to make a cake. Yeah, you don't really need an excuse to make a cake, though. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, we will see you in IPL Cast Six Zero. We'll see you then. See ya. Bye.